Just like any jury, there are a lot of reasons why people say they can't serve. Today, one person was worried about leaving their dog home during long trial days. Dismissed. Another had a work schedule conflict. Dismissed. But some of the jurors spoke directly to their ability to be fair. One juror saying, quote, I believe no one's above the law. I'm not 100 percent sure that I could be fair. Another said, quote, I'm not sure that I can say beyond a reasonable doubt. I can try and I think I can, but I'm not sure I can be fair to him. Both were dismissed. I want to bring in former attorney for Donald Trump, Tim Parlatore. Said, good to see you again. So the prosecution addressed the court today saying, quote, no one is suggesting you can't be fair because you've heard from Donald Trump. We need jurors who can set aside strong feelings and focus on evidence. It's not a referendum on the Trump presidency. We don't care. This case is about whether this man broke the law. Do you think Donald Trump can get a fair trial? I certainly think you can get a fair trial. I mean, New York juries, and I've tried several cases in New York, uh, you know, they can be fair. And, you know, to, you know, to believe the campaign, you know, uh, polling and simply, you know, try to equate the two and say that because he lost the election there, therefore he will, you know, lose a trial, I think it doesn't give enough credit to New York jurors. I'm sure your experience is, and my much more limited experience inside trials is that, Sometimes the days are long. Sometimes it is hard to pay oh, yeah. attention. But <laughs> if you're a defendant and you're a famous defendant, as Donald Trump is, people tend to pay maybe a little more attention. He has been, for the last couple of days, appearing to close his eyes. Some reporters have suggested he seems to be nodding off. Does that surprise you? And do you think it's a problem for him? You know, this is a very long and tedious process, and so certainly um, it's something I have seen defendants do, you know, before, during the jury selection process. Uh, so I don't think it really is going to affect uh, that much. Um, yeah, I think that the big important piece is uh, for him to be paying attention, you know, during the trial and, you know, to, you um, you know, basically not be doing anything that will, you know, unduly prejudice the jury against him. You know, we are at the stage of the trial because none of the arguments have really been made yet, except by Donald Trump outside of the courtroom, largely, um, where people are kind of looking for clues. One of the clues they thought they got yesterday mm -hmm. and then again today was the relationship that seems to have developed between Donald Trump and his lead lawyers. I mean, he and Todd Blanche were seen laughing and talking, often conferring, whereas Susan Nichols, who is a very experienced defense lawyer, seemed to be a little more off to the side. Should we read something into that, and could that be important? You know, I, I have a lot of respect for Susan. Uh, you know, she's been around for a long time, and she's a very good lawyer. Uh, I know that, you know, Todd is certainly somebody that's, um, you know, been closer to him, you know, through the campaign and things like that. And so uh, I can understand why you would have a stronger relationship with the lead attorney uh, in situations like that. But I think that Susan is a professional, and, you yeah, know, the fact that she's still there is a good thing for him. Do you but, think I, but I certainly understand. I mean, that that's that, it's kind of standard that you do develop that stronger relationship with the lead attorney. He says he wants to testify. Should he? And and what's the first thing if you were still his lawyer, if you were his lawyer in this case, that you would say to him about that? Well, first of all, the decision whether a defendant should testify should not be made until after the government has rested their case. You have to wait and see what all the evidence is and then make a strategic decision at that time as to whether you need to testify or whether that's going to potentially be something that just creates an unforced error. Uh, if that happens, then the conversation I would have with my client is going to be very hard and very direct, and we are going to play it out, and I'm going to be the prosecutor. I'm going to beat him up myself and see, you know, see if he still wants to do it after that session. Yeah, he has said several times in public and pretty forcefully that he will testify. He has made it clear he has nothing to hide. He says he wants to answer questions. You know the pitfalls of that. You know that there's a good reason that unless you're in trouble after the prosecution presents its case, 
and then arguably still in trouble after the defense that you don't have a defendant testify. But do you think he could be talked out of it if it's something he really wants to do? Ultimately, constitutionally, it's a decision that only he can make. And so well, for a lawyer to prevent this, him from testifying would be a reversible error. Yeah. It, can he be talked out of it? Uh, I believe that if he respects his attorney's opinion, he will follow it. I think that's a very diplomatic answer, Tim Parlatori. It's always good to have you on the program. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on Get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.